morning everyone how are you you guys are live here with brushed by brandy um so dixie bell paint has taken over this group this month and they've asked me to do a um, live series this week so we are on day number four if you've been joining us if you haven't you can scroll back through on this page and um you'll find our video from earlier this week so far we have talked about um what is a brand ambassador what do we do we have toured my workspace, talked about some storage ideas. Yesterday we talked about staging, and today we're going to talk about going live on Facebook. So I'm live on Facebook right now, and I'm going to give you some of my best tips that I can. Um, going live on Facebook is never an easy thing, and it intimidates a lot of people. I've been doing Facebook Lives for quite some time, and I'm still intimidated by them. I get extremely nervous um, every time I'm supposed to go live on Facebook. So um, so I'm just going to go through a list. We're just going to talk today. Um, my number number one tip for going live on Facebook is to be prepared. Be prepared. Run through this thing in your mind beforehand. Um, what does it look like? What are you teaching? Good morning, Mert. How are you? Um, what are you teaching? Have all your materials on hand. If you run through it in your mind, then you can kind of play through, okay, I'm going to need paint brushes, I'm going to need a rag, then I'm going to need my glaze, then I'm going to need, um, you just run through it in your mind. I don't think I am connected to the Wi-Fi. Give me just one second. My Wi-Fi might be a little bit bad right now. Am I back? Sorry about that, you guys. So you just got to witness one of my number one struggles on Facebook Live. Yeah, it did freeze up. I'm sorry about that. Um, so one of my number one struggles is I live out on five acres and we don't have great internet service where we are. So making sure that your internet signal is enough to handle a Wi-Fi or a Facebook Live series is really important. What I've noticed is the more viewers that you have on your broadcast, the stronger that your Wi-Fi needs to be. Good, okay, it's back. Um, so our struggle has been that we just don't have very good Wi-Fi service. So I did have to look into alternatives and we looked into several. My answer ended up being um, a portable Wi-Fi and it emits its own Wi-Fi signal that I can carry with me all the time. Um, it's not always the most reliable, but it is the best solution that I found. So um, that's part of you know learning how to do this. If you guys follow my page, you know there were a couple rough months in there when we were trying to figure out what is the best way to go live on Facebook, even though I live in a semi-rural area. It's not super rural. I got a Starbucks five minutes away. So back to what I was saying um, about being prepared. Run through it in your mind. Nobody wants to sit there while you have to get up to get your mister and then, oh, you forgot your transfer and you forgot your paint. And um, so run through this in your mind. What does it look like? Um, the other thing I think a lot of people appreciate is when you just jump in and get started. Um, I'm one of those personally. I will not watch a video that's too chatty if somebody's sitting there saying hello for 20 minutes. The majority of people are going to catch your video on replay. So be considerate of the fact that most people are not on the live broadcast that are going to watch that video. Um, yeah, it's really hard because you want you want to pay attention to the people that are on their live, but don't forget that more people are going to watch your your video on replay. Um, so when you're setting up for your Facebook Live, you want to have your phone on landscape. Landscape is um, sideways. You're going to have your phone sideways versus portrait is this direction. So you want to keep your phone on landscape. Um, you want to have a clean backdrop behind you whatever it is people don't want to be looking at your dirty laundry pile and your kitchen sink and you know whatever it is if you're in your workspace try to find a clean little corner where the backdrop is semi attractive um, and not distracting from what you're going to be doing um, let's see if you have another person who's able to do your live with you I know it's a luxury we don't all have that but for example, if you have a shop and you have a, an, a staff member there that can help you, if you have your spouse at home, even sometimes one of the kids is nice to have there with you helping. Um, they can read questions to you. They can interact with you because otherwise you're just sitting there by yourself in a room talking to no one and it feels a little bit awkward. 
So if you have that second person there, it can make you a little bit more natural, conversational, if you actually have someone to kind of interact with. Um, so my husband started doing my videos with me about six months ago. I think he's on here now. And it's helped tremendously because he picks up on the points when I slow down in my talking and that's when he'll throw me out questions and that keeps me talking. And then um, he also is conversational with me so um, we can interact during that time too. Um, I feel comfortable with him so I don't feel as guarded as I do sitting in a room by myself talking to Facebook. So if you have another person there that can interact with you, make you feel a little bit more comfortable, that's huge. That's huge. Take advantage of that. Um, if you don't already, invest in a tripod. So I just got a new one yesterday, day before yesterday, and I've used it the last two days and I really, really like it. So I've had a few. This one was only about, I think it was $30 or something. And so far it's it's probably my favorite one. It's the most practical. So I'm, I'm actually going to link it on here when I get off and show you guys. <laughs> I'm not imaginary. I'm a real girl sitting in my garage feeling awkward right now. Um, so there are different types of tripods. Um, there's the ring light and I have one of those and the ring light is great for your face if you're doing videos just on your face. But when you're trying to show a piece, um, it doesn't do so great. So the ring light is known for doing like makeup tutorials and things like that, but it's not great for actual a, a painting tutorial. So, um, you know, if that's all you have, then great. But I tend to turn all my lights on right now. I've got my door open, so I've got some nice natural morning light. Um, but I actually don't prefer the ring light when I'm trying to work on a piece too. Um, let's see, you want to try to be natural, conversational, comfortable. People do want to get to know you to a certain extent, although they don't want the whole video to be about what's going on in your life. So it's about the practice of learning how to connect what's going on in your hands to your mind and then vocalizing that. So everything that you're doing, good morning, Natalie, how are you? I'm not a ray of sunshine in the morning. In fact, this time slot has been really hard for me. Um, <laughs> So try to communicate everything that you're doing. Pick a topic that you're comfortable in teaching. So you don't have to, and I'm guilty of this too, you don't have to overthink what you're teaching on your live about, is this some new revolutionary technique? No, people are just as interested in learning how to wet this dress and how to put on a coat of paint. Um, so don't forget that there are is a crowd that's just as interested in the basics. I think that that can get overlooked sometimes when we keep trying to challenge ourselves. Um, yeah, you know I'm not. Um, so pick a topic that you're comfortable in teaching, that you feel like you have enough knowledge in, you've done it before, um, and, and, and choose that as your topic. Don't forget that there's a crowd out there for every level from beginner to advanced. Um, to keep a nice variety in your content. Choose something that's interesting, um, that you have enough to talk about to keep yourself going um, through an entire Facebook Live. Um, this entire week, I've been doing these Facebook Lives. Do you know what, I've been, what I did? I sat down over the weekend and I took notes. I've got a notepad with like three pages of notes just on this series of Lives. Um, if that helps you, take notes on things that bullet points that you want to cover on your live. Um, make sure you turn your notifications off on your phone. The little ching, ching, ching. Um, every time somebody calls you or your mom texts you, um, whatever it may be, yeah, my Facebook page goes the whole time I'm on a live. Um, so turn your notifications off so people aren't hearing that the entire time. Um, if you're by yourself, if you don't have somebody else um, in the background that um, people would need to hear talking, like for example, if I wore a head or a microphone, you would not be able to hear Sean talking. So I don't wear a microphone on mine. So I just try to project my voice loud enough. I'm used to it from yelling at my children. Um, but if you can't project your voice loud enough, make sure that you wear a, a microphone. And you can just put on a pair of earbuds. Most of them have a built-in microphone now. Um, you can throw those on and it will be so much clearer on your broadcast to be able to hear what you say. Yeah, if you feel more comfortable putting makeup on, I feel more comfortable with makeup on. Um, if you don't want to be on camera without your makeup, then go put your makeup on. 
I don't want to be on camera with this girl. Who wants to play right now. Say good morning, Ginge. Good morning, Ginge. Um, so yeah, if you feel more comfortable putting your makeup on, then go put your makeup on because you've got to feel comfortable in front of these people. Now, there are going to be times when your live doesn't have anybody on camera interacting with you, and that's okay. Um, if you feel confident in your content and you're well prepared, then you can just run through your broadcast. Ginger, um, she wants to play this morning. I don't. Um, if you have people on your broadcast to interact with, all that much better. If you see questions pop up, you can answer them as they pop up. Um, sometimes they get a little repetitive. So if you're getting the same question over and over and over again, um, it might be time to you know, just disregard those and come back and answer those once you're offline. Um, I know a lot of people will come on and ask what colors you're using, what colors you're using when we've said them, you know, 20 times. Eventually, some of the other people on the broadcast will start answering your questions for you. Um, but if you don't have that, if it's a, you know, if you're just getting started. So Facebook likes when we go live. Um, doing lives on Facebook is a great way to grow your following if you're trying to get an established following. We talked about affiliate marketing on Monday. And if you'd like to get started being an affiliate for companies, you need to have a following. You need to show them who's going to see you. If they work with you, who's going to see you? Um, so having a following is a very, very, very important factor. Um, and Facebook Live is a great way to grow your following. Um, Facebook likes it. It will put them out there more. Um, for interaction and people seeing those helps build your business people like to know your face um, see what you're working on get to know you a little bit personally let's see um, trying to think I covered through just about everything on my notes it's not easy you guys but I think that the key thing is to be well prepared just be well prepared go with the flow um, you're going to have to think on the fly. You're going to have to, um, you know, things are going to fall and you're going to drop something and you're, you're going to have to adjust to those changes and, and react under fire on camera. So just be prepared to go with the flow. Try to be relaxed. When you first start out, your videos might not be as great, but every time you're going to get a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. Um, my first videos had a fraction of the viewers and they were awkward and I was robotic and super nervous and you could tell I was just sweating bullets the whole time. And that's okay. That was part of my learning process. I'm glad that they're out there for me to rewatch and for you guys to rewatch and see, um, you know, what it was about to learn how to do Facebook Live. Um, I still stress about it. It never feels natural to be on camera, I don't think. You wish you knew more about the electronics of how to do it. Okay, so let's talk about that. So once you've got your internet figured out and you think you have a strong enough signal, um, I go live just for my cell phone. I've got my cell phone on a tripod right now. Um, and you would just click into your page. There's a little icon that says go live. Um, type in your, um, you know, your title of your live and then you click a little blue button and it's gonna put you on. You're going live, it's that simple. So anybody who has a cell phone um, and something to hold it with, you always get tongue tied and that's okay. It's okay to get tongue tied, just catch yourself, go back to what you're doing if you need to take a brief pause and think about it. Um, as far as how long a live should be, so you, you definitely want your lives to be no more than 30 to 45 minutes. And even that's a long live. If you've got something that you can show in a really concise little video, people appreciate fast little videos too. Um, so don't make them too long. You know, don't go on your page and just start talking about everything that's going on in your life. I do that every once in a while, but not too often. Um, try to keep them concise. Get to your point. Don't sit and chat with everybody that's on your video. Just get to your point. Jenny, you're on the live. This isn't the replay, girl. <laughs> we are live today. Um, so, let's see. I hope that kind of answered your question on the, on the technology. It's actually so basic, you don't need to be scared of it at all. Make sure you have good lighting, the clean backdrop, your notifications are off. Yeah, Sean could be easily replaced by a $20 tripod. Not even $20, you can get him for $10. 
What do you suggest to do a, f a first live? <clears throat> Pick an easy topic. Talk about distressing. Just take your sandpaper and now I'm gonna rub the edges. And now I'm gonna come along the bottom and you want it to look natural and pick an easy topic. Choose, start with the basics, just like you did with painting. You don't wanna go right into, how do I do multicolor layering and blending? And um, choose something that you're just incredibly comfortable with. Um, you know, talk about painting hardware or do a little sign or, um, you know, a little staging item or something that you're comfortable with and use that for practice to get yourself up and going. Even once you just do your first little five minute video, you're gonna feel so much more comfortable with working up to doing, say, a weekly series or um, something that your following can look forward to. So keep it simple, keep it simple. If I'm asked on the fly to do a live, I'll sit there in my brain and think about, oh, what could I cover, what could I cover? You know what all never fails? Just going back to the simple ones. Um, do we have to be signed up to do live on Dixie Bell? So yes, um, most of the brand ambassadors have a um, regular time slot now where we all go live weekly at the same time. So for example, Fresh by Brandy is live every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Dixie Bell main page. So I am painting tonight on the Dixie Bell page. Um, but they put out a schedule in advance, so a month in advance. The schedule just came out for September. Um, it usually comes out the last week of the month where you can sign up for lives on the pages. Um, and Dixieville has a few different pages. They have their main Dixieville Paint Company page. They have the Chalk Mineral Enthusiasts page, which is a group. Um, so there are several different pages that you can go live from by that sign up sheet. Um, pre-recorded videos are great, but you're less likely to get views on Facebook with a pre-recorded video. They're better for YouTube. If you want to share a pre-recorded video for YouTube, YouTubers have different standards for their videos than Facebook Live does. So people on, on live broadcasts are a lot more flexible with understanding they're watching a live broadcast. When people are watching YouTube, they tend to expect that they're getting clear, concise, to the point information, none of the chat, none of the you know laughing or jokes or mishaps or anything. People on YouTube want really concise videos. So pre-recorded videos are great for that. When you can just go on, catch on your main points, get off. You know, a five minute video at max for, for YouTube. Um, they like them short. So just different standards, know your audience and where you're gonna be putting your video. Hi, Fiona. Um, I was gonna say something and I forgot. Um, so yeah, I will be painting live on the, on the Dixville paint page tonight. You feel like you two people are mean. You know what I do with those? I delete their comments. They can be, they are just a little more um, brazen, I think, than Facebook livers are. Um, and so I just delete the comments. It's not the standard I want to set for my YouTube channel. And so I take them off and I get mean comments too. And don't let them phase you. It's just try to laugh them off. Be able to laugh at yourself. Don't take this too seriously. Um, it's not the end of the world if something goes wrong on Facebook Live. You can delete these, you know. After you get off, if you feel like it's not something you want out there, just delete it. Um, but at least you got the time in for some practice. Let's see. See, I'm even struggling with this one. Just talking about Facebook Live, it just, um, you know, trying to make sure I have useful information to share with you guys. Can you do a live on Chalk Mineral Paint Enthusiast? Um, Chalk Mineral Paint Enthusiast does have a sign up. Um, I'm trying to think. They're, they're usually regular times, which I believe are 8 p.m. Eastern and 3 p.m. Eastern. So if you're in between those times and nobody's on, they don't discourage us from popping on and doing lives if we want to. Um, so I don't see why not. I'd have to check the schedule because I can't remember what's on. I don't sign up on the schedule anymore. So I'd have to check the schedule. It just came out. So go look at the schedule. If Chalk Mineral Paint Enthusiast is on there, then you want to make sure you're on schedule before you go live. Um, we usually have someone from Dixieville Paint that's on there monitoring our Facebook lives and they're on there so they can answer questions. If we get, if, if we get tongue tied and can't answer a question on a product, um, and you know what, don't be afraid to tell your, what your viewers, you know what, I'm not sure. Let me look into that and I'll get back to you. So I always watch my lives back and I'll go back and interact with questions that I might've missed on the actual live broadcast. 
Um, and I try to do that the day of and then go back maybe the next day and just check for any new comments um, that might have popped up in between there. So I think those are probably my best tips on Facebook Live is, you know, don't overthink it. Make sure you're well prepared. You have all your materials out. You've run through the process in your mind so you know everything that you're going to need. Make sure your phone is on landscape. Make sure your notifications are off. Your lighting is good. Your Wi-Fi is strong. Um, you've got a clean backdrop behind you. Um, you know, free of distractions. If you can, put the kids in front of a TV show and uh, put your pain in the butt puppy in her crate and... Um, yeah, but there's always chaos in our life and sometimes you can't prevent that, prevent that and people like knowing that we're real too. So don't feel like you can't show the real side of life. Um, don't be embarrassed at all. My life is chaos too. My kids are in school right now, but you know, I'm going to spend the last three hours of the day just doing pickups. So don't be afraid of the real stuff. Um, most people on a Facebook live are flexible to the fact that they're interacting with your real daily life on a live broadcast. So I hope that was helpful. I'm gonna pop off just a quick live today. Tomorrow is our grand finale um, of this week of lives and we're gonna be talking about brush care. We're gonna explore my brush station, talk about, um, yeah, make sure your phone is sideways. It's actually make, your, make sure your phone is sideways. This is how you wanna have your phone when you're doing a Facebook live. Um, you have all your dirty brushes together. We're having a brush cleaning party. Bring your brushes. I'm not cleaning them for you, though. You guys are cleaning your own brushes. Um, in fact, I'm going to have to make some dirty to be able to clean. I don't even have some right now. Um, so I will see you guys back here tomorrow at noon Eastern. We'll do our grand finale to our week full of lives. Um, I'm painting live tonight on the Dixie Bell paint page. I've got my piece all prepped for me. Um, that's another thing I want to say is I usually start thinking about what I'm going to be painting live about a week before. So um, it's hard to pop on and just do a live with what you're working on. I prefer when I've thought about it, I've got a piece prepared. I know what I'm doing on that live. So a lot of thought goes into these. So when you do see people out there going live on Facebook, show them some love. Show them some love, you guys, because it is hard. It's hard to prepare for. It's hard to get the guts up to go do it. So go on and just give them a couple hearts. Just say, hey, how are you doing? Your piece looks great. What? Just be encouraging because it takes a lot to ramp up and get comfortable doing a Facebook Live. And a lot goes into them. The preparation, the, you know, during, the cleanup afterwards. Um, if I go live on Facebook, sometimes I end up with 20 brushes to clean afterwards and a piece half finished that I didn't intend to start. Um, so, so seriously, please be encouraging to people who are trying and learning and getting better at it every day. So come back tomorrow and join me. Um, I also am going to mention you guys, I'm wearing my Bells and Bows sweatshirt today. I will be teaching November 3rd. Um, in person, and I don't usually teach in person, November 3rd in Edison, New Jersey. It's called the Bells and Bow Tour. There's a website, bellsandbowtour.com. I'm also teaching in Ontario, California on September 28th and 29th, literally a month away. Tickets are still available to both events. So if you haven't checked those out, um, that's the Redesign with Dixie Bell Tour 2019. It has a Facebook page. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Jin just came in to say goodbye to you guys. Say goodbye, Jin. Say goodbye. So we're going to go play. She wants to play. Um, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.